Okay, so basically I want to go through all the different sequences there are on MRI of the brain. This is an MRI of the brain with contrast, and I'm going to go through uh, the different sequences, which I think are important, and I'm going to sort through them. So to start, here is the, uh, I have the ADC map here on the left, and the B1000 on the right, and in the other video I show you kind of how to go through this, but basically looking for something that's bright here and dark here corresponding uh, to diagnose a focus of restricted diffusion high on that differential being infarct. Okay, so now here on the left, I have one of the most important sequences in brain imaging. This is the flare sequence on the left, and here on the right, I have the T1 sequence. So initially, at first glance, they might seem like the same sequence, but I'll show you some, uh, some differences. You can see on both that the ventricles are dark, and then on both the subarachnoid space, the fluid in the subarachnoid space is dark. But in fact, the flare sequence is a T2-weighted uh, sequence. And one way I can tell is if I look at the white matter and the gray matter. If I look at the white matter here and the gray matter here, the gray matter is higher in signal and contains more fluid than the white matter, the white matter being more fatty because it's myelinated. If you look on the T1, you can actually notice that the, the reverse is true, that white matter is higher in signal because T1 uh, sequence is, uh, ha fat has a high signal, and the uh, gray matter is actually darker. So on the T1, you can differentiate the two if you look at the difference between the white matter and the gray matter. You can see here the gray matter is dark and the white matter essentially is brighter in sigma. Why is the flare so important? What the flare sequence allows us to do is allows us to uh, be very sensitive for evaluating fluid abnormality within the brain. Um, because the brain is bathed in fluid, it has CSF kind of everywhere. It has CSF in the ventricles and subarachnoid space. What this sequence does is it sats out the pure CSF signal so that anything that has a fluid abnormality, uh, any fluid abnormality that has fluid signal in it, it now becomes more conspicuous against the background. Okay, so now I have a flare on the left. I have a uh, T2 weighted on the right. And here you can see that uh, the T2 weighted, which is not suppressed like the flare, does have high signal in the ventricles and high signal in the subarachnoid space. So you're still going to see fluid abnormalities on the T2 weighted imaging. But uh, the reason flare is superior is because since it's sattered out the CSF, it makes it easier to find a very subtle lesion in the, say, white matter. If you're looking for MS lesions, flare makes it very easy to see white matter lesions, whereas on the uh, T2-weighted imaging, you have to deal with a uh, signal from other fluid sources. So why do we still get a T2? T2 is helpful for looking at the flow voids. Here you can see the left MCA and the right MCA. And basically, the major use, I think, for the T2-weighted images is to either confirm an abnormality on the flare imaging and also to look at the flow voids to see if they're obstructed, say, in a stroke. Okay, this uh, next uh, set of images here, this is the susceptibility-weighted imaging. So what is this useful for? You can see that it's obviously not really good at depicting the brain anatomy that well. It kind of looks fuzzy, and you may wonder, what's the point of this sequence? Well, the point of the sequence is, is what it does, it accentuates anything that has calcium or blood within it, and it gives that a very low signal, uh, even to the point where you can notice that even in these vessels here, these are the internal cerebral veins, you can see that anything with blood will have a dark signal associated with it. So for example, if there's a tumor in the brain and you want to know that it's hemorrhagic or not, you can characterize it using this sequence to see if there's any blood within it or any calcium within it. Okay, so this is a very important sequence in the MRI of the brain. This is the post-contrast T1 sequence. I can tell it's T1 weighted because the white matter is high in signal and the gray matter is dark in signal. I can tell it's post-contrast because I can see uh, bright uh, uh, intravascular contrast here in the MCAs and also in the venous sinuses here as I, as I continue to come up. Um, basically, this sequence is very important for looking for any enhancing abnormality. For example, if there was a tumor in the brain, a brain tumor, there would be lighting up, taking up a lot of contrast, and be very conspicuous on this sequence. Okay, so here I have uh, four sequences. So if I didn't have a lot of time and I just wanted to focus on the most important sequences, what would I choose? I would choose these. This is the B1000 sequence here on the upper left, and this would I would use to look for any infarct. Then I would go to the flare sequence to look for any fluid-based abnormality within the brain, wherever it might be. I would also look at the post-contrast T1 to look for any enhancing abnormality, for example, a tumor or an abscess within the brain. 
And then any abnormality I see, I would definitely take a look at the uh, non-fat suppressed, non-post-contrast uh, T1, just to evaluate the uh, T1 signal of that lesion. So these are kind of the minimum four that I would look at for an MRI of the brain. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you.